France did more than just surrender. A lot more, actually. France has had one of the most successful militaries in history. And I feel like we're doing ourselves a disservice by only talking about this one thing. I'm not saying you shouldn't meme the white flag. Okay, those are great. Problem is, the meme economy's gone stale for this place. Stocks have plummeted because this is kind of all we're talking about. I'm not gonna lie, like, I I've contributed a lot to this problem as well. So I'm just here to bring some awareness and hopefully talk about some other topics. That way we have more memes for the meme arsenal. So we can start France's history with actually a guy named Caesar. We talked about him in the last video. And yes, this is pre getting shanked, obviously. He would invade the region of Gaul or basically a big portion of Western Europe, and the Romans would control these lands for about five centuries. Later on, the Franks would pop up. They were located about here, and this guy would end up being the first king to unite all the Frankish tribes. He's actually considered by some to be the first king of France, and his dynasty would continue to rule over the territory for another two centuries. Then boom, here comes daddy, father of Europe, Charlemagne, will be crowned emperor of the Romans by the Pope on Christmas day. Like, damn. This guy knew how to make an entrance. Although, uh, this did kind of piss a lot of people off at the same time. They weren't happy. But all future Holy Roman Emperors and French Monarchs consider their kingdoms to be descendants of Charlemagne's empire. He'd end up having 10 to 20 million people within his borders, as well as a ton of puppets under his control. Problem was, just like many other nations that came before it, they got too big, and uh, they would eventually split into three. One day in the future, we'll talk about these other two places whenever I eventually cover Germany. But for now, we're going to talk about West Francia, because this is thought to be the earliest stage of what would later become the Kingdom of France. This wouldn't become official uh, until Hugh Capet and his house took over, but whatever, I, it happened pretty soon after. So this nation was just chilling, they were relaxing for a while, uh, and then kind of overnight, a big ass empire would pop up and was ready to wipe out France almost instantly. This place at the time actually held more land in France than France themselves. Pretty embarrassing, let's just let's just admit that right off the bat. And all it took them was like one marriage. That probably didn't do a whole lot for their self-esteem. The King of France just wasn't gonna let them do that though, so the conflicts pretty much were inevitable at this point. This was also kind of the beginning of maybe one of the greatest historical rivalries ever. The extreme rage boners these two had for each other would last almost a thousand years. I mean, don't be fooled. I'm sure just a little bit of that is still kind of lingering even to this day. Luckily, Dr. Phil here, Phil II, uh, he would find a remedy and he'd for the most part kick them out of Continental Europe Kind of, uh, not entirely though, but he was able to buy his country some time. The fighting would pick up again with the 100 Years War, and obviously this was uh, kind of an even bigger deal because this meant France was gonna be threatened multiple times. England was trying to claim the throne, and obviously France was like, nah. Things got really intense though, and it did look like France was pretty much doomed. Uh, luckily, they were saved by a teenage girl, I mean, she wasn't the only reason, but damn, I mean, she deserves a lot of credit. They won the war, and this was a huge factor in shaping the nation's identity. Okay, so now that the English weren't much of a problem anymore, it was time to look east and take on the Habsburgs. Uh, again, if you don't know about them, uh, they, they pretty much just controlled everything at this time. But the big blue blob was about to do their thing. Multiple conflicts popped up, and even more fighting continued, but that's not the important part. I mainly wanted to discuss this because this dude right here was out celebrating in a jousting tournament after a peace treaty and was killed by a lance. The instability that followed would lead to the second deadliest religious war in European history. Three million people died because this man was kind of partying just a little too hard. I shouldn't laugh, but, but, oh man. I, <laughs> This was the widow left in charge at the time, and it was among other things, because there was obviously more than just one factor, but it was kind of just a big struggle between the Catholics and Protestants. Ultimately, it kind of just led to people being a little bit more accepting of other faiths, uh, kind of. Uh, kind of. Insert these three, because I don't know where else to put them, uh, and you can just watch the countless movies, shows, and read books about them. They kind of had a pretty big impact too though. So just a little further south, uh, some dude apparently sailed west and uh, founded India. He founded India in the Caribbean. India was a tropical paradise, if you didn't know. Competing with Spain, Portugal, the British, and actually even some others, France began to establish colonies in this new world. They started in Canada, later moved all the way down to Louisiana, and even grabbed parts of the West Indies. These new territories weren't limited to only the Americas, as France began to eat up land in Africa, and uh, the real India as well. These new lands were meant to be kept forever to spread French culture, language, religion, and then Great Britain was like, nah, bitch. And in seven years, that all vanished. Yeah, it, it was all gone. British Thanos just snapped it all away. And when I say France was triggered, 
Uh, I mean, France was triggered. It was so bad that when a couple of rowdy people uh, across the ocean decided to throw a bunch of tea in, in the water, the French were willing to sacrifice everything just to get their revenge. Like, uh, they pretty much, uh, unknowingly, destroyed their own country just to get back at Great Britain. France ended up tanking their economy in order to help the US gain their freedom. Uh, problem was this ended up being one of the major factors that caused their own revolution, you know, back at home. So yeah, I mean, funny enough, uh, the only reason why we Americans can make the, the whole France surrendered memes is because of France. Without them, I mean, even to this day, all of us would be British. So as I said, the French Revolution caused a whole lot of people to lose their heads. I mean, they pretty much got rid of the monarchy, created a republic, caused a whole lot of chaos, and finally ended in a dictatorship with this guy in charge. But a lot of people say this was one of the most important events in all of history since, you know, it kind of made democracy like this cool thing just around the world. So with Napoleon in charge, you know, he said, hey guys, uh, I'm the emperor now. Let's go ahead and just kick Europe's ass all up and down the continent. And that's exactly what they did. France's borders and influence increased everywhere. And it kind of looked like they were on their way to just global domination. But then Russia, yeah, Russia, happened and of course they did what they do best and that's kind of cock block anyone that wants to take over the world they burnt their own shit down retreated for months at a time and allowed winter to do a lot of the work really just brilliant strategy man you can't can't argue with that so this little french man which i i don't even know if i should be calling him that because i i still don't know like was he short? Was he normal height for the time? Was it just British propaganda? I don't know, it's just confusing. He'd be in prison twice. First time he Shawshanked out of that one. Regardless, he and his country had a major impact on all of Europe and even the world. But after all of this, the monarchy was then restored in France. So yeah, for the French people themselves, that must have just felt like a long, pointless side quest. They decided, you know, yeah, what else are we doing? Let's, let's just go ahead and try that whole colonial empire again. And uh, yeah, they, they ate up a large portion of Africa and Southeast Asia. Oh yeah, and in the middle of this, not a big deal, but the French did lose a little tiny war. Didn't matter that much, but uh, it did allow the, the German empire to form I never heard of them. Is that bad? That that wasn't that bad, was it? Just kidding. Yeah, uh, World War One happened, and uh, basically France became a massive trench. The Western Front can be summarized as uh, no one moving, trench foot, and spicy wind. Both sides ended up having lots of casualties, but the Central Powers would eventually be defeated. All right, so the French definitely didn't want that to happen again, right? Uh, that was a pretty horrible experience. So with their brand new territory, they decided, hey, let's go ahead and try to build like this super impenetrable fortified line. It was gonna be like almost impossible to make it through this thing. This thing was gonna be the ultimate way to stop any sort of German aggression in the future. The problem is, uh, this this forest right here yeah no one realized just how fast uh the nazis would move through that area germany captured paris in a few months a few, few months into world war ii yeah I mean, I mean this event has kind of been immortalized through the memes nothing else that we covered is, is talked about not not really here's the thing though okay we got to talk about the french resistance movement which sabotaged the axis behind enemy lines, provided military intelligence, maintained escape routes for the Allied soldiers, and would organize as the French forces of the interior, which ended up being the fourth largest European army by the time World War II was finished. They did even more than just that. I, I just needed to highlight some things, because obviously, I mean, this stuff is never talked about. And after WW2, they got their country back, but just like Great Britain, they ended up losing their colonial empire. Not before though, France understood exactly what us Americans were saying when uh, when we were screaming the trees are speaking Vietnamese. But the French would go on to be one of the founding members of NATO, as well as, much more importantly, they would go on to win two World Cups. That's really the highlight of this video, I think, right? Again, this was a bridge, so don't be afraid to expand upon some of the topics or talk about some things that uh, I kind of had to gloss over. A little more in the comment section. Again, this country has such a huge history, it, it's, it's very hard to do this in 10 minutes. And hopefully there's something here that can catch on, something that uh, can be memes that we've talked about a lot of things i think uh i think this place deserves a, a bit more than than just one or two jokes thanks for watching and i'll see you next time and big thanks to furry cruise lvc destiny 9000 paint me like you do your sheila elijah senpai crucifixion swiss argo maxi g king solomon ben moak galley tanner of the nazareth mr for kelly cooter donkey brandon h mega fat boy a sneaky g jared clark thank you